Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Daniel Pinot, and I am a longtime Microsoft Access uh, MVP. And in today's video, I would like to talk about resizing subforms. Um, what am I talking about? I'm talking about going from one computer to another with different resolutions, different screen sizes, and the way your uh, subform may expand and be beyond the the size of the window or perhaps it's the inverse when you open it up it's super small and there's blank space surrounding the subform and you'd like it to take up all the space well we can auto size it we can make it fully expand and shrink and adjust to the screen resolution and things like that and make the user experience uh, basically universal uh, regardless of the computer and resolution and it also applies to the cases where you change the size of the application window. Yeah, you can resize it manually, m restore, maximize, things like that. We can make it respond to that. And it's actually surprisingly easy to do. So uh, let's take a look at that. You're going to see I have an article. It's on the screen right now. And I'm going to cover two ways of doing this. There's a more modern approach. Uh, which is built in and if you have to support old databases, well, then there's the VBA approach So you can review the article to your heart's content. I have my demo database here You're gonna see I have some sample data Now the sample data just a quick shout out to George uh, Hepworth um, because I've stolen it from his website <laughs> Um, he offers, if you go on his website under Access Testbed, you can download this bulk data that allows you to quickly set up a database or perform testing on large data sets. Um, it's a very simple set of tables, but it's got a large amount of data. Now, I didn't need a lot of uh, data per se, so I've truncated the data in the table substantially but it just quickly gave me some tables I could play around with. So if you want to, feel free to come here and download it for your own needs. It's great for testing out applications. Um, as you can see, I've taken three of his tables. Very quickly look at it. Employees, the employees are then linked to department employees. So which department is an employee associated to? And then over here would be the list of actual departments. If we look at the tables very quickly, um, employee, self-explanatory, you have an ID and you have general information about the employee. Then the department employee, it's, it associates an employee to a department number. And then departments is simply a listing of the departments, giving it an actual English textual value. So we now have data, then I wanted to build off of that. So what did I want to do? I wanted to build, I'll show you, a simple form where I have a combo box here that allows me to select the department and therefore over here display the employees associated in that department. And what we're aiming for is to have this guy here, this subform, resize according to the screen, how you have the application set up. So let's look at the default behavior. Okay, so if I open it up, we come here and you see the, the subform is the size it was in the design, right? You come here in design, it's small, okay? But when I open it, look at all this empty space here that's wasted. Now, I want that to automatically expand. I want it to take up all that room so then when I select something, I don't have to use the scroll bar as much. Now, depending on the data, you may still need to use the scroll bar to a certain extent. But right now, this is just simply ridiculous. I've got all this empty real estate and I can only see one entry at a time. So that's a little ludicrous. So how do we go about this? Well, there are two ways of going about it. Now, before diving into how I do it, I just briefly want to demonstrate the code that you're going to find behind these forms, the default code, not the specific resizing code. That way, when you see code on the screen, you go, okay, that's not that important. 
because um, what we're really here is about the resizing. But I wanted to show you just how I've made this work. Now pay attention here that we have a subform. We have the combo box. Now I'm reusing this subform in every single one of these instances. So I didn't create separate for, uh, subforms. Because of that, I have to at runtime change the record source of the subform. So then it filters based on the combo box of the parent form. Okay, I know it sounds a little odd, but it's basically when I'm on the department one here, I need it to filter this based on this form. When I'm on the anchoring both, I need it to filter this, but based on the anchoring both uh, combo box and so on and so forth. So I needed to make the record source dynamic. And to do that, I simply use the forms open event. See, and I call it call adjust record source. Now, um, you're going to see that the adjust record source is different in every single example and simply binds it to the parent form. So I'm on the employees by department. So it's here, employees by department. If I go on to the anchoring both, it's going to show the anchoring both so on and so forth anchoring vertical anchoring vertical so that's all this is it's just dynamically associating to the right parent form and then the combo box i also have a slight event going on here where it's requiring the subform whenever a selection is changed so when you change the department to view it updates what's displayed in the subform so that's it that's all but basically these make the demo work, but aren't required for the resizing. And you're going to see it in every single sub uh, parent form. Sorry. So you're going to see lots of code, but you can ignore this portion of the code. At least now you understand how it works. Okay. So uh, we're not going to save any changes. No. So like I said here, if you look at the default behavior, you see we've got a lot of wasted uh, space. If we change the application size, right, and we resize, there's no change. So that lost space is lost space is lost space. So let's look at the more modern approach. Now, the more modern approach is to use anchoring. It's a built-in property that is now available to us, has been for some time now. And let's start off with just using the vertical anchoring. Let's look at the behavior and then I'll show you how easily it was to put into place. So if we open the anchoring vertical, you'll see here now when we select one of the departments, how now the subform takes up all the vertical space. So it's no longer restricted to just showing the one record. It's filled what's viewable to the user on the application. Okay. And if we resize it, you see, I've made it, it reacted to that. The anchoring automatically adjusted. This is now what's viewable. So that's the space it takes up. Now we've done a vertical. So the scroll bar is going to stay in the exact same position, the same, regardless of the width available to it. And therefore, if you get to a certain point, it can get cut off where you can't see it. Uh, so it depends on the behavior you're going for. So in certain instances, instead of just the vertical anchoring, you may want to do both vertical and horizontal. Let's go pick. And now you'll see it's the scroll bar. It's maximized that subform, not just vertically, but also horizontally. So it's keeping it to the right side of the available space. And if we resize, it's going to call me a liar because I have a minimum size for the subform. Yes. But as you can see here, the, the, the scroll bar now will move along with me once we've taken up the minimum amount of space for that subform and it will follow me along. So to prove the vertical one, if we resize it and we select there, that scroll bar won't follow me along versus if we come back to the both that scroll bar always stays on the right side okay but the vertical never moves okay sorry um so how is this done very very easily like i say it's a built-in property so it makes it super easy two seconds and you're done let's open this guy up in design view you select 
the control that you want to anchor. So this isn't just limited to subforms amongst other things, but you can come here, you pick it, you go on your property sheet here under format and you come down to horizontal anchor, vertical anchor. You'll see I've set my vertical anchor to both. So what is that saying? It's telling it, I want the top to say where the top is relative to the section it's in. And I want the bottom to stay where the bottom is relative to the bottom of the section that it's currently in. So basically what I, if you look at this, I've got a very little gap at the top, a very little gap at the bottom, and that's what it's always going to retain. So it's going to grow and shrink just respecting that minimum gap that I have it set up as. And similarly, you can do the exact same thing with the horizontal. And that's what the anchoring both did, if we look at it you'll see that when I pick it, I've got both of them set to both. That's the only change. So this one or set of properties can allow your subform to grow or shrink. Now we're talking about growing or shrinking. We have to understand one thing. It's not resizing the controls contained within the subform. Okay. So that doesn't change based on the resolution. If that's something that you're after, and it's truly, truly resizing everything, not just the container object. Well, in that case, I'm going to recommend you come over to my second article about resizing based on screen resolution. And you'll see there a whole bunch of links to different approaches that can be used. Okay. Um, some work better than others. Um, I've used Peter software, a shrinker sketcher. It works excellent. I've used Ken Getz uh, resizing code as well. That worked for me for years. Um, so there are a multitude of solutions out there. You just have to take one and implement it. Um, and that will be a subject for another video. Uh, but today we're really talking about resizing the container only. Okay. So we've, uh, let's bring this back here. Wow. Okay, so we've discussed anchoring. Now, anchoring works great. I believe it's been out since 2007. And it works great if you're dealing with ACCDVs and things like that. But if you're still supporting older databases, um, well, then anchoring isn't available to you. In which case, we turn to VBA. And VBA has a, it, its powers too. Sometimes I prefer to use VBA just to have everything accessible to me through VBA. Um, and I've done the exact same behavior. So if you come here, human resource, as you can see, it adjusts. Okay. So right now we're on the vertical example. So the scroll bar always stays positioned where it is, but if we resize the application, it resizes and it adjusts accordingly. If we take the both one and we come here, you'll see it always takes up the same space available to it. This time the scroll bar stays on the right hand side and it adjusts accordingly just like the anchoring version did the difference obviously here is we're using vba so let's dive in and look at the vba itself if we look at the vertical one thing we're going to look at is in the events i'm now also using the on resize event to trigger that when this form is resized that it resizes the subform accordingly so let's just go and look at the open and resize events. You're going to notice they're very similar. Okay. So we have the open where I do the adjust. Okay. Which you're familiar with. I have the combo box after up that you're familiar with, but you're going to see now here on the open, I'm using another procedure, the resize subform in this case, vertical. And when the form is resized, I also call it, that's a little trick to make it responsive to any changes that may occur to the application window size. And what is that? So all the code is contained here. This is, this is what controls the resizing from a vertical standpoint. What I'm doing here is I'm coming here and I'm assigning a couple variables that I use later in calculation. So I'm getting dimensions and I'm coming and I'm seeing here if this section header is visible. So there's a header. Well, then I'm assigning I header height equals to the section height. Okay. And I do the same for the footer. Now in the instance that there is no header or footer, it's going to throw error 2462. 
So that's why I have this error handler that will catch it and simply skip over it and move on to the next one. So whether it's, it's there or not, that section, it will still work. The code works, okay? And by default, right, because we've assigned integer, by default it's zero. And if it is visible, then it overrides that zero. So now we have our height for our header and footer. Now I come down and I figure out what is the change in height that's occurred. And I can do that by using the inside height minus the footer minus the header. And then I subtract the height of my subform, my current subform height, and then a little buffer zone that I add. That's that little gap at the top and the bottom. So this, this subtraction here is optional. I like having just a little gap. I find it makes things clearer to the user. But basically, I figure out what the change in height that has occurred, and then I simply apply it to the height. So I take my existing height, and I add the change in height to it, and it resizes it to maximize what is available to it. And that's it. That's the entire code. It's that simple. So it's just basic math to recalculate what the change in height is and apply it. And that's it. If we look at the second example where I'm both maximizing height and width, you're going to see it's even easier for the width because you're familiar with all of this. The only line now that we're adding for the width is this one, where we take the width and we add whatever the change in width to the left side of the subform is. And then I have my gap. So it really is a single line to adjust in width. And now you have a fully responsive subform container. As I said, it will automatically take up all of the room available to it. So now you can uh, create subforms that adjust to the container, the application window, based on resolution or you know the user resizing the application itself, and uh, you know changing changing whether the ribbon's visible or not, it resizes that accordingly as well. So it really is the best of both worlds. You have the choice now using anchoring, which means zero VBA, which is beautiful, but it's for the newer generation of databases. If you're supporting older generations, then the VBA approach works great as well. Um, and we'll stop here. I hope this helps a few of you out there make things a little bit more snazzy and responsive for your users, maximize the space that's used, so then you don't end up creating forms that display sort of like this, with a lot of wasted real estate. Thank you for spending a couple minutes with me today, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.